Okay, all you beautiful people out there in immunoglobulin world, today we are talking about the long-awaited sub-QIG, the other white meat. You know what I mean. And prior to the 1980s, there were very few options for patients who needed infusions of immunoglobulins. It, there was really just IVIG. I mean, really the only option that was out there was to endure really pretty painful injections of immunoglobulins. And they were painful enough that people usually kind of just bypassed this, this therapy for that reason. They, were, they weren't fun, not fun at all. So out of necessity, they went back and they took a look at an earlier therapy or SCIG. And while subcutaneous infusions were being done in the early 70s, they weren't the norm and they were not approved by the US FDA. So that, that posed a problem. So when the FDA finally licensed IVIG in 1981, I believe it was, it gave patients a much better opportunity or option, I should say, to get their immunoglobulin therapy other than these painful injections. So it was, it was a landmark. So four decades later, IVIG still continues to be the treatment of choice for so many people with autoimmune and neurological conditions. However, for some, it comes with a lot of drawbacks, such as multiple IV sticks, needing to have a healthcare professional administer the treatment, unwanted side effects, and just flat out the need for a more convenient therapy. And in 2006, the FDA approved our first subcutaneous IVIG product, which was made by CSL Bering, called Vivaglobin. Vivaglobin, Lobin. Viva Globulin. Viva Viva Globin. Really bad name, but Viva Globin. Yay. Subcutaneous IVIG, as I stated in the beginning, is given through a needle which is is pretty much bent like a right angle. Uh, and it's inserted into the subcutaneous tissue. So that would be either your belly, your thighs, your hips. Some people will do the back of their arms. Um, and they, they insert these needles themselves. So that can be a plus, a huge plus. And for others, it can be a drawback. If you have needle phobia, understandable, um, or you know, if you're just at a point in your life, maybe you're very young or you're getting up there in age and you're having trouble, you know, removing caps off of vials or you have strength issues in your hands due to arthritis and things like that. So it's really, it's finding what works for you. Okay, so the first positive about subcutaneous IVIG is it is a therapy that can be done in the comfort of your own home. I mean, for, for so many people, that is huge. And I understand why, you know, it, it provides more autonomy. Uh, you can set your own schedule. If you don't drive, get transportation um, set up or rely on friends or family to take you. So sub-QIG is actually self-infused. Nurse will come to your home and sit with you usually for a few sessions and a lot of the companies that make sub-QIG have their own programs that offer nursing and free drug initially when you're starting. So that's, that's also a really huge help and a really nice thing because they supply all of the supplies you'll need. They teach you about them. The nurse comes to your home. She sits with you and your family, gets you familiar with everything. You know, it's just a really nice, nice option if this is a therapy that you require they'll teach you how to to draw up the medication if that's necessary however there are some brands that do come with pre-filled syringes and this takes that whole step out of it which is really nice for a lot of people as well so you'll learn how to draw up the medication you'll get your honorary rn degree 
and you'll also learn how to prime the tubing. And I'm going to link some of the videos from some of the sub -Q IG brands that they, they put together really awesome teaching videos just to give people a really good idea of what this therapy entails, um, you know, what the nursing visit will be like, what some of the supplies look like that you're gonna need, and what an actual infusion looks like. So they do a really good job at providing a lot of great information right up front before the nurse even gets to your home. But the other nice thing about SubQIG, it's given, it's still given with an infusion pump, but the one that I'm most familiar with is called the Freedom 60. And it's kind of like a child's wind-up toy. It takes a, a syringe, it's called a syringe driver. You would draw up the medication into a syringe of a certain size and you snap it down into the pump. And if I can get my hands on one, I might have one. Uh, I will put it in this video. I might have one. Anyway, um, you snap it down into the pump and there, there's no electricity needed. There's no outlets needed. You can pretty much do this wherever you are, in a car, when you're camping, on the beach, if you're so inclined. Uh, but you just wind the, the pump up and then the driver just pushes the medication in through the syringe. So this is the Freedom 60 pump. It's, it's awesome. So many people use it that I've infused before. It's very convenient. The other upside to subcutaneous IVIG and the reason why so many people go on IVIG is because they might have crappy veins. Yeah, I mean, that's always a factor because with IVIG, you're, you're starting, the nurse needs to start what we call a line or a peripheral IV on you. Yeah, and uh, you know, some people just have a rough time with this for whatever reason. They have horrible veins, it requires multiple sticks, and this is just uncomfortable for a lot of people. So this is this is an alternative to that. You know, you can you can insert these needles on your own. I am fighting with a dog right now, if you see the camera shaking, but anyway, if you don't feel like being a human pincushion, this is definitely an option that you should talk to your doctor about. The other cool thing here with subcutaneous IVIG, for those of you that are sitting there going, this all sounds great so far, but the problem is, is I'm just flat out needle phobic. I am not gonna be able to do this on myself. And in those cases, which is not common, but a case. So inserting these needles is really not that big of a deal. It's really not. I guess. I mean, I could see where it would be for somebody who's never done it, but. We, we will send a registered nurse to your home to infuse the subcutaneous IVIG. Yeah, so you can, you can also request a nurse to come. Again, it's not the norm and a lot of agencies don't like to do this because it is considered a self-infused therapy. But, you know, we, we always try and do what's best for our patients and I do have plenty of patients that we do send nurses to their home to infuse the subcutaneous IVIG. And the other thing about the needle phobia is with subcutaneous IVIG, sometimes it is just one needle site and others, you can have multiple sites. Um, and again, if this just is not gonna fly for you and you're kind of freaking out about this, you learn that you need to not only insert a needle on yourself, but maybe three or four needles on yourself. You can even go up to eight in, in some brands. So again, this can be kind of like a, like a holy crap moment. I don't know if I can do this. You'll discuss this with your doctor and your nurse is also, again, a great person to speak with about this. The pharmacist is going to also recommend how many sites would be most comfortable because if you think about it, the more infusion sites you have, the more needle sites you have, 
the less amount of fluid at each of those sites. So, you know, rather than having a good amount of fluid sitting in only a couple of sites, you can spread that fluid out over multiple sites and it just gets absorbed. It might be a little more comfortable for you over that, you know, 24 to 48 hour period that that fluid is absorbing. I would say the average though is usually about three to four needle sites for a subcutaneous IVIG infusion. So the next positive about subQIG is that blood levels tend to stay a little steadier in comparison to IVIG. And what I mean here is with IVIG, because it is infused directly into a vein, it kind of hits your system like gangbusters and your body's kind of like, all right, you know, you're, you're bombarding your system with this infusion of antibodies, whereas subcutaneous IVIG, because it's infused the way it is into the subcutaneous fatty tissue, the absorption tends to be slower. And because absorption is slower, the, the rise in the blood levels is a little steadier and slower and therefore, people don't experience such a huge swing of potential side effects like chills, uh, headache, maybe some fatigue. The next benefit for at least one brand is that sub IG is now covered by Medicare Part B. This can be a rather expensive treatment. so. You know, for those uh, without a Part D Medicare, this has been problematic in the past. But uh, now that one of these brands, and the brand's name is Hyzentra, is covered by Part B, um, this has been a huge, huge thing for so many Medicare people. All right, so now the negatives. Fair balance here, we have to Talk about the negatives with the positives, right? So we've already touched on some of the, the negatives of sub-QIG, but you know, the most obvious one here is there's a bunch of needles that you have to insert on yourself. And for some people that is just a no-go. Understand, understand, I mean, completely understand, but that's a huge drawback for a lot of people with this therapy. And this can be truly daunting for some people. I mean, I know I've had conversations with my patients and when I tell them, well, you know, you know we'll teach you how to insert these needles yourself. You can, you can just imagine if you're not in front of them, uh, what, what's going on in their head right now. Like, wait a minute, can you repeat that? I have to what? I have to, I have to insert what? How many and what? I get it we will spend as much time with you as necessary to get you feeling really comfortable. And I have seen so many people that started out looking at me like I, I just said, you know, like you've got to be outside your mind if you think I'm going to be inserting these needles. And they're a huge advocate for the therapy now. The other potential negative is with sub QIG, you're doing most of the time, you're doing the infusions a little more frequently. Yeah. Um, because of the way sub -Q IG is formulated um, and the way that it's being infused into that fatty layer of tissue, as I said, the dosing's a little different. And usually, sub -Q IG is given either once a day, it can be given a couple times a week. Uh, it can be given every three weeks or sometimes people will do it monthly, uh, which is more in line with IVIG. However, most of the time people will infuse a, a couple times a week or I've seen every day again. So the next drawback with sub QIG is site reactions. So where a positive may be that some of the side effects that are normally experienced with IVIG 
maybe aren't as prevalent because the absorption is slower, as I discussed earlier. Um, one of the more common side effects is a site reaction or an infusion site reaction. The little redness, a little swelling, a little itchiness. And at the end of this video, as I said, I will link some of the brand's uh, websites and videos in the description um, so you can actually watch some of them and, and see all of this in real time and the video demonstrations in real time. And like I said, they're really, they're awesome. You know, these videos are, they provide such great information um, you know, this video is about giving you kind of a nurse's perspective on this and answering some of the really common questions that I get. But some of the sites like Hyzentra and Cutiquig and, and Privagen, they go into more of the nuts and bolts of these infusion. They, they demonstrate how to draw it up. They talk about the specific issues, concerns, how to's with their specific products so it's more spec it's it's more specific information about their products it's more tailored information to their products so i hope you found what we talked about today the famous the infamous sub q i g interesting i always say that i learn when i'm researching for you guys even though I have infused quite a bit of subcutaneous IVIG myself, um, it's always great. It's always great to kind of refresh my memory. And I take a lot of the questions that you guys get uh, to me during the week, you know, when I'm either talking to you or that come up in, in conversation. Um, and I, I'll take them and put them into these videos. So. Keep them coming. If you have specific questions about one of the therapies that I've talked about, whether that's IVIG or sub-QIG, drop a comment below. If you think you know somebody who might benefit from this video, absolutely share it. I really love to hear your comments and I'll see you in the next video. So click here and I'll see you there. Hi, Coco. No. Do you want to learn about sub-QIG? Do you want to say hi to everybody? No? Okay. Please don't knock down my lights. This is my assistant. Just, yeah. Coco, you're killing me here. Anyway, dude. <laughs>